All the PCBs in this episode have been donated by PCBWay. We thank them very much for that. Same goes for Samtech who provided connector samples and micro coax cables. Hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you know that we are in the midst of restoring the Apollo Communication Electronics. It started by us getting our hands on the S-Band transponder and amplifier thanks to collector Steve Jervetson, who later also got us the matching NASA ground test equipment. The project scope extended further when team member Marcel got us most of the rest of the comms system boxes, to the point that we now have a good portion of the electronics of the spacecraft. And it keeps coming thanks to the generosity of our viewers. An anonymous collector loaned us the missing ground S-band transmitter that goes with our test set. Plus, for good measure, I recently acquired this missing piece at an auction. This is the CTE, or Central Timing Equipment, the clock and timing reference for the ship, which also generates some of the reference frequencies for the communication system. We are over a year into the project and are pretty far along, having resurrected the transponder and reverted our ground PM transmitter and ground PM receiver to their original Apollo frequencies. In episode 13, we finally succeeded in getting a double locked PM link between Earth and the spacecraft on all original NASA equipment. Quite recently, we got the FM downlink going and were rewarded with TV from the moon, first in black and white in episode 21 and then in color in episode 22. Lately, we have been working on the PMP or pre-modulation processor, the central node of the spacecraft modulation and demodulation system. It is the central connection point for just about everything, including most of the switches on the control panel. So we are at the point where we have to start joining all the boxes that form this very complex system, one that could simultaneously deal with ranging voice, data and television, all at the same time and from lunar distances. Which brings us to our nemesis, the connectors and wiring harnesses. Sometimes we are lucky enough that we can find the right military connectors. It then becomes a long task of figuring out the pinouts and making wire harnesses. That's how we did connect the transponder so far. But even then, we could not find one of the Deutsch coax connectors that are used everywhere, so I had to improvise. My newly acquired CTE is causing us double trouble. It has a square connector that we can't find any example of, and some more of these Deutsch multi coax connectors for which we can't even find the contacts. So, in order to continue with our restoration, we need to make some connector adapters. Let's start with the CTE square connector adapter. We could not find detailed dimensions, but measuring its pitch reveals something unusual. It was metric. We knew the Apollo guidance computer did its guidance and navigation calculations in metric, but we had not encountered metric mechanical dimensions yet. But thanks to that auspicious choice, we have modern 2mm pitch Samtech connectors that will exactly match. So Eric drew the short straw and started to work on the PCBs. And right on cue, PCBWay just came up with new PCB colors. Nice! What about this grey at the top with a tinge of blue? Looks like that would go well with our Apollo box, don't you think? So we are trying a new color. And we get a pen. And we get some boards. Oh, a magic a gray boards. color. Oh, they are gray. Look at that. Ooh, pretty. That will work. That will work. So that's supposed to go on the city. Let's go on the city, compare colors. Yeah, that will be just perfect. Yeah. Ah, we <laughs> like it. I think those are Samtex? They are. Mm -hmm. They are. Yeah, they are. Oh, they are Samtex. They are samples. They are, they are free Samtex stuff. Cool. So Eric has wired his 
connector breakout, fantastic. And we think we have found a pin out. You just have the uh, 512 hooked up. And then it's welded, so there's nothing we can do about it. It either works or doesn't work, so. Um, so I just turn it on, I guess, and we should have 512 kilohertz. We do. Oh, it makes a noise. Frequency counter. All right. 512 kilohertz. Woo! 0.00. Nice. You got your money's worth. <laughs> yes. Done a little bit more wiring. I wire it into my BCD27 segment decoder. It's counting. <laughs> Okay, let's do a second digit. Oh, it's counting! This is Apollo time. Let's see when it does the rollover. So the idea is to do that with a bank of mixing tubes, of course. Of course. 59. Yo. There we go. Okay, yes. 60. I'm amazed how, how close that is. It's just quarters later. <laughs> yeah, this is the, the less accurate backup clock. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's the backup clock. Normally it, it clocks on the AGC, mm -hmm. which has a super duper clock. All right, that worked a treat and our city is counting at least the seconds. We'll test it more completely in another episode. Eric then went on to the next design, the Deutsch coax connectors. We have two versions, the by 5 design, like on the transponder, and the by 12 design found on the CT. And Tube Time has received a package. That's right. From PCBWay, our favorite supplier. But they are making new stuff. It's 3D printed offering, I think. They have a 3D printing service. It's, it's great, I actually used it the other day. Oh, you did? I did. And then, so they can print transparent stuff, which is very transparent. I haven't tried the transparent yet, but uh, I have tried this, which is uh, pretty tough. I think it's an, similar to nylon. Yeah, it's not your regular material at all. Very nice. And then they have the new colors. So we have used the gray because it goes well with our equipment. And then they have this, this pink. And, and these are vintage stuff, right? Yeah, this would be great for a lot of vintage boards. I think this is imitating phenolic. And this is, you'd think there's no mask on it, but there is, it's just a transparent mask. So this is, this is pretty cool. And what do you get? Let's go to the stuff that you actually designed. All right, well, let's have a look. Uh, so what we've got here is a connector board that's designed to plug into these very special uh, Deutsch connectors here. Which you couldn't the... find anywhere. Exactly. And so we decided to just make them ourselves. There you go, I have it. And if you flip it the other side. Right. And so here you can see we have the uh, stencil for that. And I, I love the gray color that, that turned out spectacular. Plus it's gray blue, which is actually the Apollo original oh, yeah, color. It's just right. That's the prototype. So it's just yeah, a it's it's I saw <laughs> yeah, it's a pin in the middle and I have the tube, a brass tube that is just the almost the correct diameter. It's very close. There. And then uh we use some of the Samtech technology here. Uh, Samtech is uh is a, a makes their own micro coax. Usually you can't get the micro coax uh, just for yourself, but they, they, they bent the rule for us, they gave me a, they made me a roll. And so it's going to be much easier to put that, you know, that many macro coax rather than the regular coax. Uh, we won't have the mechanical problems. And that micro coax is, is incredibly good. They make some that goes to, uh, I can't remember, 50 gigahertz or something like that. So it's it's, cr it's, way it's crazy there. good. Um, all right, so that's how we're going to make our new connectors.
Oh, do we want to solder the pins first? The pins center come pins? Last. Will you solder them from the other side? Yep. Ah, I see. Yep. A little bit of smoke. So that's the flux burning off. Oh, I see the solder melting. Okay, cool. See the... They're starting to settle a little bit. Like I can tug on this a little bit. It seems okay. Is it centered enough? Not quite. So okay. I'm gonna go and reheat it, recenter it. And we just tried it, and it worked perfectly. So if I do that famous word, it worked perfectly. Clunk. Done. Looks good. And it comes out. Clunks. Off. All right. We defeated the evil Deutsch connector. And our center pins, they come from these old... I don't know what those are. It's a, it's a type of um, IC connector. And we're transforming to a connector factory. All right. So we made a whole bunch. Great, we now have working substitutes for the Deutsch coax connectors. But that is small fry compared to Eric's next task, which is a reproduction of the communications section of the control panel. Not the whole thing, fortunately, just the section right here at the bottom right. So to test the PMP further, it's going to be difficult unless we wire it all up. Eric here has uh, gotten the short straw for doing a repro of the control panel? Uh, not the entire control panel, fortunately, but just this little section down here. So that's got all the functions that go to the PMP and to the recorder, all those switches. And in case you still wonder why we need this, it is because the wiring is complicated, to say the least. Eric adapted the original NASA schematics and that yielded this, which resulted in a board like this. Actually, two boards, as the front one ends up being our front panel on which the switches are mounted, complete with scale-reduced 3D-printed reproductions of the knobs. Eric and Mike are giggling, because what do we got? We got some boards! When a, a box from PCBUA shows up, we're always giddy. Oh my goodness! <gasps> oh, this is a big board! This is big! Oh, look at this thing! Oh wow. Wow, this looks really good. Indeed, this one doesn't even have a trace. They were all surprised by that. They went like, what? You did? Yeah, no traces. <laughs> did you forget something? But that's just the front panel and that's the back with the electronics. So then these will stack together like this. And Master, you have all the doodads that go with the thing. Yeah, 3D printed some things to make it look even better, like this little 3D printed knob. Yeah. yeah. So we'll be able to rotate that. And even the squelch knob too, so this this whole little mechanism will fit underneath. You have the squelch wheel. And we'll get the little Excellent. squelch wheels, like that. Excellent. So we have dual dual man operation here for wiring the transponder. Okay. I think Mike is on the military end. Yes. And and Eric is on the IDC end. Alright, this is looking mostly finished with the uh, round military connectors on this end. I think those two are PMP. And this is also PMP, so there are some more to make. As you can tell, it's not fully wired. But man, it looks good! Squelch buttons. We can fantasize that we're rotating the antenna to receive signal and then position switches. Ready to fly pretty soon. 